everyone who values freedom should rejoice at that. Dave Dugan. Thanks, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, and a happy St Patrick's Day to you all and colleagues across the Chamber and around the world, friends of Ireland. A big thank you to the Honourable Member for Rochdale for uh, securing this debate. Anybody questioning the potency of outward-looking, culturally rich states with, by global standards, relatively small populations and their ability to penetrate the highest offices of the global system in Brussels and Washington need look no further than the Irish to see what can be done. And it is great to celebrate the sons and daughters of Ireland being in this chamber, even though some of us would like to apply our political trade elsewhere. <laughs> when I got elected two years ago, I was pretty confident that I would be the first double O Dugan MP to be in this place. But sadly, no, it turns out in the late 19th century, there was a chap from County Monaghan who beat me to it. <laughs> anyway, that's one for the record books. I am Scottish, Madam Deputy Speaker, and as you may have established over these last two years, I'm very proud and motivated by that fact. But I am of Irish stock, and I wear that complimentary characteristic with great pride. Also, and indeed this year, I will take delivery of my Irish passport to underscore that I will yeah, not be yeah. stripped of my European yeah, citizenship, yeah, yeah. and I will also get through the airport quicker. <laughs> my family hail from Donegal, Ireland's premier and most oh, picturesque country. county, with the tallest mountains, the finest golden beaches, the sweetest tough smoke and the wettest bogs. The Irish, Irish county against which all other counties are judged. My mother and father came to Scotland separately in service and in agriculture, mm. respectively, settling in Perth to raise six children. This was a rich childhood experience, being part of both the Perth community and the Perth Irish community, being pals with the kids that lived around about, but also pals who went to the Catholic school with me across town. My mum raised us in the heavy, repeated expectation that we could do well for ourselves, that we could be do better than those that went before us, and that we could do this with the opportunities of employment and education that we had. You have the ability, we were told repeatedly as kids and young adults. This immigrant ideology of ambition and betterment, of course, is not unique to the Irish diaspora, far from it, but stood generations of us in good stead, the product of Irish immigration. Slightly contradictory, however, was the equal but opposite message that we got from our parents also, which was not to get too big for your boots or somebody will cut you down to size. Life could often be complex back at home. That said, perhaps because of that advice from my mum and her, her contemporaries, eh, all of the four families that I grew up with in Perth, limiting this just to my first cousins, the sons and daughters of the Irish in Scotland have gone on to Spain, Japan, back to Ireland, Taiwan, Australia, the US, England, Colombia, Bahrain, the Netherlands, and there's more I'm sure that I can't recall. But the bulk of us remain on these islands in Scotland and, in, and England, and I know that's not uncommon. My dad was an agricultural and building contractor, come to Scotland and working the land as a teenager in 1938, staying on in Great Britain for most of the war, during which time he was employed harvesting sugar beet and also in the construction of the new runway at Biggin Hill Airport in Bromley, which became a key RAF location during the Second World War in the Battle of Britain. And in, his half of the century, in a half a century of contracting across Angus, Perthshire, Clackmannanshire and Fife, like thousands of other Irishmen, he created wealth, employment and capital through industry based on their labour, but also their business acumen. These enterprises, the length and breadth of Britain, changed the face of our streets, building sites, agricultural productions, the pub trade, literature, professional football and energy production in the hydro schemes of Scotland. Some honourable and right honourable members will touch on the prejudice faced by the Irish in some quarters, and this was a real and ugly struggle faced by the Irish and other communities, but I won't dwell on that, except to note that the Tunnel Tigers, Madam Deputy Speaker, are a legendary Irish tunnelling corps, with many hailing from Arnmore Island off the coast of Donegal, who have been tunnelling their way under, the, under Great Britain for the last 75 years or more. They were a key component of the hydro, hydro schemes and dams in Scotland and the tube eh, lines in London. But strangely, they received no mention in the Scottish Hydro's official social historiography of the tunnel projects in Scotland in the Central Highlands, and I am grateful to my friend John O'Donnell for campaigning on this issue and for my colleague Annabel Ewing, MSP, for raising it in the Scottish Parliament. In closing, here on the western shores of Europe, Scotland has many close friends and neighbours, and all of our, our friends in England and Wales are across the sea, and of these, Ireland is our closest. 
and that closeness extends well beyond the realm of geography. The symbiosis of Ireland and Scotland goes back over a thousand years with the Gaels and their culture reaching across the Channel to the Western Isles and into the Scottish mainland almost to its entirety. And whilst Gaelic culture may have been forcefully driven out of Scotland to great effect, and uh, we value the Scotland-Ireland relationship very highly. Scotland's bonds with Ireland remain deep and strong. Ireland and Scotland are steeped in the tradition of education and shared learning, dating back to the time of St Columkill, whose monastery on Iona provided the first centre of literacy in the region. So, for over a millennium and a half, Madam Deputy Speaker, Ireland has been influencing life on Britain, and I do not see any end to this positive influence of this proud, independent nation. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I think I can speak for many of those celebrating the Feast of St Patrick today when I say that we share the values